Happy Saturday, everybody. Guys, apartment multifamilies are, are starting to completely melt down. There's massive cash bleeding, and we're going to talk about exactly what is happening and what the biggest multifamily disaster is here in Nashville. And guys, it is bad, and it's from yours truly, Adam Newman, the former WeWork CEO that complete, you know, set up a a, a, a a company that was fifty worth fifty billion dollars at one point, and somehow, even though it became worth zero dollars, that guy walked away a billionaire. I'm going to tell you why it's a disaster, and I'm going to set the stage with some demographic information about Nashville that I think you guys should know because it impacts everybody who's buying and selling residential real estate here in Nashville. Let's just set the landscape. Everything that was bought in 2021, I would say a 90% chance it's just it's just a complete disaster in Nashville. And here's, here's what I mean. And by the way, the one we're about to look at, 2010 West End, it's the most expensive one, $160 million, at least on CoStar. This is CoStar data. It's the most expensive one. We're about to look at just how bad it is there. And guys, it's so bad. But look at this. I can scroll here at 3.75 cap rate. You know, some of you in the two, there's a four cap. Let's see, I saw another 3.89 cap, 3.35 cap. Guys, it, it, and you can say, oh, but there's value add or they model rent rates, whatever increasing. Guys, here's the thing. Even if your net operating income is, is increasing, a 20% drop in value is gonna require you to bring money to the table if you have to refinance. Let's take a look at a couple other things because I want you to know too that last year was actually a banner year for Nashville, okay? The absorption was 8,300, which was more than double what it was in 2022. Okay, so Nashville had a fantastic year. It was a way better of a year than I would have expected. Okay. And at the same time, we are seeing rents tank. We're seeing vacancy rates skyrocket. And why is that? And even market cap, look at the market cap. It went from 4.92 to 5.4. If you just model that out to about a 10% increase in cap rate. And so if you took all those properties and just assumed that their cap rate increased by 10%, I mean, it's still a 10% drop in value that they have to overcome when they need to refinance. And believe it or not, guys, when interest rates were at their record low, for whatever reason, and this is, this is what gets me about the, the commercial space. For whatever reason, people decided that floating rate debt was the right way to go, even though they could lock in five-year, 10-year, 15-year. And, and, and there's 30-year fixed rate out there for people that are connected to Fannie and things. For whatever reason, people, people chose the floating rate debt. I, I don't understand. I mean, guys, this is after inflation was hitting 7% at one point in 2021. 7%. You can fact check me on that. I can't remember exactly, but I know it was out of control by December. And that's when that building was bought on floating rate debt. I don't get it. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Let's just look at some migration data. We know that CoStar, 8,300 people moved here in the past 12 months, which was more than double what it was. At the same time, we're still seeing the rent rates drop across Nashville. This is Nashville wide. You can see it peaked. It peaked in May of last year. I would expect a peak again, but we're already starting to see it peak. And guys, the promotions are getting wild out there. There's more coming online. There's more coming online. And there are properties that opened two years ago that are still only 70% occupied. So their lease up is two, three, 36 months. That means the ones coming online today are gonna be 36 months, guys. That's 24, 25, and 26 before they get leased up. And that's if we have another banner year. Are we gonna have another great year? I mean, what if we have another 3,200 year? That was 2022. If we have a 3,200 year, it's going to get ugly, guys. We're talking about three, four years for these things to fill up, but let's keep going. Okay, so what I want you to know about this is where the migration is coming from. Now, California has been losing residents. Uh, according to this by Ryan Lundquist, he's saying that 260,000 people estimated to leave California in 2023. Okay, why is that important? Well, here's the LinkedIn workforce report and this one is for Nashville. And when we scroll down to it, it it's not super clear. I, I, I've looked at this data a lot. And really all it gives you is where people are moving from. Okay, so Nashville is getting a massive amount of people from LA. Seven out of 10,000 members are coming from LA. And so moving to Nashville. So in 2023. So that's quite, that's quite a lot. To give you an idea of the outbound migration, 0.68. 0.68 of 10,000 members are moving out to Huntsville, the lead driver of net outbound migration. So clearly people are moving in way, way more than they're moving out here in Nashville, even in 2023, even as people are saying, oh, it's slowing down. It does not yet feel like it's slowing down. In fact, 2023, by my estimations, was, was a stronger year. Now, 
part of the absorption that we saw here, when we go back, let me go back here. Part of this 8,300 absorption that we saw here was very possibly, very likely due to the fact that home sales were so low and that people could not afford to buy a house, so they rented. So I don't attribute all of the absorption to just people migrating here. But nonetheless, we are getting strong inbound migration in Nashville. Let's look at Redfin. Redfin's reporting that 3,000 moved inbound from, um, they, they, this is their net inflow estimation for November. It's September, October, November's quarterly. Um, so in the top origin would be Los Angeles. Okay, so Redfin is validating this data. LinkedIn is validating this data. LA is a huge driver of migration and migration out of California is in the hundreds of thousands. That's going to continue to move the needle on housing here in Nashville. And that brings us to how in the world could you be bleeding so much cash in a multifamily if we're getting so much inbound migration? Why? Why? How? Okay, so let's take a look at this. So first of all, context on the article. Let's go back to the property. 2010 West End was a class A luxury apartment complex right across from Vanderbilt. It's a beautiful building, as most of the buildings are in Nashville. The sales price was $158 million in December of 2021. Okay, so in December of 2021, and for whatever reason, they bought floating rate, they bought it with floating rate debt. They thought that was a good idea. They took out a loan for $120 million. Guys, I don't even know if this property is worth $120 million now. Uh, you know, everybody, the money was just flowing in 2021. Who wasn't having a great New Year's in 2021 that owned multifamilies? It was a big commercial real estate party. Little did they know it was about to come to a screeching halt. I actually don't, I don't even know why it was that much of a secret. Okay, I owned 24 units in, in December of 2021. I was, I was on the phone like all of December trying to find fixed rate debt. I mean, it really wasn't a secret that interest rates were going up. The Federal Reserve was saying inflation was out of control. I just don't understand why people did floating rate debt. It just, you know, for a newbie like me in commercial real estate, it seemed obvious that this was one of the biggest risks in real estate. And it, and it has been, okay? But that's not why this property is struggling. The average effective rent that that co-star is showing $2,100. We're going to talk about this 2121 number, but let's just look at this. Now they have two months free plus three months free parking. And you can see their base rent is $1,599. $1,599 with... Uh, two months free, what would be the effective rent on $15.99 with two months free? $13.32. Okay, so if they're renting and they're getting two months free, it's, it's the effective rent of $13.32. So 358 units right now are in this building. 62 are available, which is actually up. It was 60 this morning. I can't believe it changed already. Uh, Coastal State is pretty good, guys. That gives us 7.6 million. Okay, so if it is, in fact, you're getting revenue of $7.6 million dollars Here's the problem. Let's let's go to the article here. Now they have two properties, by the way. This is only one. This is the the biggest, most expensive property. But they also have Stacks on Main, which is right over the bridge, East Nashville. What you'll see here is they had to raise money because of a cash flow deficit at two separate properties. Guys, these are bleeding cash. We're about to do more math here in just a minute. Uh, we're gonna skip the Stacks on Main. We're just gonna look at the West End building. The West End building was a 121 million dollar mortgage, guys. The mortgage rate they probably got, this is floating rate debt, guys. You know, they can't see any public data on the loan performance, but they did have to go and raise money to try to buy a rate cap. And that's what they're doing here. You know, they're just saying this is all due to interest rates. Well, it's due to interest rates and the fact that there's just massive supply coming online for the next two years, which, you know, was also fairly obvious in 2021, guys. It was not a secret that all these buildings were being built, but they thought the entire United States was going to move to Nashville. In a statement, Yield Street noted short-term pain across the mortgage commercial real estate industry blaming high interest rate, but added that it would continue to invest in multifamily. But by the third quarter of 23, the forecast had grown considerably darker. Rent growth, when taking concessions into account, had plateaued. We know that's going down now. Operating income was 26% below budget. That's huge, guys. Operating income, 26% below budget. And the joint venture needed more money to cover the cost of an interest rate cap that Flow had purchased in the quarter. Rate caps spare floating rate borrowers from paying interest. I cannot believe they got floating rate debt. I just, I'm not, I'm going to say that over and over again. The fund for 2010 will end what will pay to replace a cap set to expire this month, plus operating costs. Not only is it going to cover the interest rate cap, but they're not paying their operating costs, even with a rate cap. 
let's go back to the property itself. Now, the bottom line is their rents are dropping rapidly and they're much, much lower than they were uh, a year ago. 2162 gives us $7.6 million for this property, okay? But if you have a $120 million mortgage at 5%, you're paying $6 million in interest. Now, keep in mind, they have to cover interest plus principal if they're even paying principal. Maybe it's an interest-only loan. But property taxes on this is $2 million. So between interest of 5%, which we know it's going to be higher, right? They're going to be paying like 6 7 8%. But let's just assume it's 5%. Okay, $6 million, property tax, $2 million, and then they have to pay to maintain this place. They have to pay to insure this place. They have to pay to manage this place. They are bleeding, and that's the operating cost. They're basically like, we don't have money for operating costs. That's what this is going for, a rate cap and to pay operating costs. They're bleeding money. And guys, if you think that somehow this next year is going to be better, let's just take a look at the market. Okay, there's 18,000 under construction. Thank goodness it's not 25,000. 18,000 under construction right now. Okay, but we just had a great year of 8,300 absorbed. Are we going to have another 8,300? Guess what? There's still 12,000 being delivered every year. Okay, are there going to be 12,000 delivered this year? It's going to be high. Okay, I don't know exactly how much is slated to deliver this year. I know that there's been projects that have slow rolled, projects that have stopped. So I don't know the exact number, but I would I would reasonably estimate 12,000. And guess what? That's 4,000 additional units that are going to send empty on top of everything else it's being empty. And that's if we get 8,300 guys, if we get 3,000, like we did in 2022, it's just going to be so bad. Okay. So this is starting to really matter. Guys, look at this 158 million, 157 million, 155 million, 140 million, 130 million, 120 million. There's $1.5 billion of properties just in the top 10 that sold in 2021. But there's 110 that sold in 2021 just in this little map right here. All of these, the cap rate expanded and the rents are dropping dramatically. It, de it depends on where, how much they've dropped. But what we do know is, is that the modeling is not panning out. And we can see that by the Yield Street article saying that they were 26% under budget. Doesn't surprise me at all, okay? If it's 26%, say their, their net operating income is off 26%. It's off 26%. And by the way, cap rates expanded. So, so they're getting hit when they have to refi. They're going to get crushed, guys. That being said, contract volume is still negative year over year. That could be helpful to the commercial space. But I don't know that it's going to be enough because if 8,300 is a great year for absorption, we are in for massive pain. Now, there will be... I thought this was going to happen a year ago, okay? I was very naive. But... There will be pain this year. There are a lot of behind the scenes scurrying for capital and help. And here's a perfect example of that. There are billions of dollars of multifamily in Nashville right now that needs help. They're in trouble. And I know that because none of the math works on any of these every time I try it. If you bought a sub four cap in Nashville in 2021, you are in trouble. You're in trouble. Your expenses skyrocketed. Rent is declining. And if you got a floating rate debt, I take it back. If you if you locked in like a 15-year mortgage, there's a chance you're probably fine, um, especially if 2021, because there was rent that increased in 2022. But if you did floating rate, you're toast. Bridge loans, construction loans, Alcove. Alcove was 2021, 180 million. It's bad, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Saturday.